What's going on? What's going on? Entertain the geeky. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> Your face is always so excited. Ah! <laughs> What's going on? Hello. So uh, you were you? I, I'm behind on Ahsoka right now. Yes, I'm, I'm two episodes behind. I well, watched the first that's, two. That's a shame. It, it's uh, a shame. Yeah, I, I'm being nerd shamed. Um, good show. <laughs> it is good. Uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the first two episodes. I didn't know what to expect. I I love Rosaria Dawson. Yeah. Um, I think she's freaking awesome. And uh, so getting to see her in that role. It's Star Wars Rebels season five, but. That's what it is. Look, the funny thing is that there's so much of a connection if you watch Star Wars Rebels. There's so many things that you would pick up on that you should just go back and watch Star Wars Rebels. Uh, First of all, the moment when Sabine is at the painting of all of them from the cartoon Mm -hmm. and she's leaving with Ahsoka, that moment is in the finale of Rebels. Really? To 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 have us show that that moment in the finale of Rebels actually took place in this timeline. Now we didn't know that at the time. We assumed it was just like a little epilogue, but no, like they recreate that moment to show, hey, see where we've caught up. This Too was that cool. moment was this moment, right? And I thought that was interesting because again, we didn't know that that was that moment. Yeah, because I didn't get into the Rebels thing. That was never my never Trip my cut. And- Clone Wars and Rebels are two of the best Star Wars shows I've ever seen. Clone Wars was fantastic, no doubt about it. Clone Wars is amazing. And Rebels is just more of that. So I thoroughly enjoyed the old uh, Clone Wars animated series that was in like the Samurai Jack style art. Do you remember that? Yeah, the Gandhi Tartakovsky two-part. And it was was great. Little 15-minute clips. No, it's not. But it was so much fun, man. It was really good. Anakin was ghost hand. Yeah, that's also where we first met the ARC Troopers, Mm -hmm. these weird clones that were, like, not chipped like the rest of them, were able to resist Order 66 when it happened. Did their own thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which gives rise to things like the Bad Batch. No, that's another thing. Have you watched the Bad Batch? I've seen, I think, about three episodes of the Bad Uh, Batch. You got to watch the Bad Batch. So Also, really good show. (laughs) We we were t- we were talking about like video game fatigue uh, last week. I did get some sure. Star Wars fatigue. Man. Well, so that's that's the question, right? Is is Star Wars? Is there too much Star Wars? So I think the thing that used to make Star Wars one of the things that used to make Star Wars so special yeah. was scarcity. It's not something that we had a ton of. Sure. So there was a lot. There was a lot that could be left to our imaginations and lots of blanks that we could fill in and stuff like that. It really let you nerd out hard on your own. Agreed. And that's that's Filoni, right? Filoni's us. Right. Filoni's the guy that's getting to go, okay, all these things I've been imagining about what happened in between this and that, we're going sh- to show you. Right? I mean, because Filoni, F- Filoni's interesting, right? I like, I like not only how he directs and his style and his writing, but I like how he has to make sense of things. Like he wants the continuity of Star Wars to work. Sure. Right. So the Emperor's return in Rise of Skywalker doesn't make a lot of sense on its face. It's like, okay, you didn't do anything to set that up. How did this happen? Well, Filoni's trying to explain that. That's why in The Mandalorian we had the Imperial Remnant trying to clone force sensitive people. It's how we got Supreme Leader Snoke. Right. I mean, he's trying to connect all of these dots. And I think that's fantastic, right? Because again, what you just said is encapsulated in what he sure. does and how he's doing it is where we, we had all this space and we had all this imagination and what, what would this mean and how did we think this happened? Well, he's just doing it. He's right. just creating it. The difference was that made it special when new Star Wars stuff would come out. Sure. And it, like that's what we don't have as much of now. Because we are so saturated with it. Well, so I guess the question, though, is, yes, we have a lot of quantity, but is it quality programming? Oh, absolutely. Is it things, you, as a Star Wars fan, you want to see? Yeah, Mandalorian's been fantastic from the get-go. Um, and we've there some of my favorite Star Wars movies to come out in the last 25 years yeah. have been in the last decade. Uh, sure. I mean... Rogue One, hands down one of my favorite Star Wars movie. movies. Um, it so, felt unnecessary, but it's a good movie, nonetheless. It, it was redundant, for yeah. sure. Uh, 
<laughs> the opening crawl told me that whole story. You don't need to tell me that story. That's what the crawl was for. Right. Well, <laughs> we kind of knew all that shit happened because they told us in A New Hope. They were like, oh, That's what I mean. The opening crawl down. of yeah. A New Hope yeah. tells, okay, us, I thought, I thought tells us the story of Rogue One. I thought you were talking about the Rogue, op- uh, the Rogue One opening crawl. There was no uh, opening crawl uh, for okay, Rogue One. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no. I was like... I was like, there was. I, no. I, that's why I was no, kind of confused The opening there. crawl for Star Wars: A New Hope tells us that the whole story, story of Rogue One. Yeah, it's like I they know. took the opening crawl and said, "Let's film this." This is a movie now, and that's fine, right? Because one of the things I said at the time uh, that gets truer the more time has passed, and we, as we've seen other things that have kind of set in, be, been set in this era, is why did it take us so long in a story where there was a civil war going on in the galaxy why did it take us so long to tell stories about those characters sure to tell stories about the soldiers who are fighting this war because we can look at luke and leia and han and these these you know the 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 higher up leaders of the rebellion that kind of have the moral high ground and kind of always get to take it but when you're a soldier fighting a war you have to make hard decisions right decisions that might not necessarily be good but they are trying to you know, they're necessary build something yeah. better. Right. So, you know, we got a little bit of that in rogue one. And I think we expanded upon that, uh, infinitesimally more during Andor. Oh yeah. As a series. Andor is, I mean, some of the best star Wars that's ever star Wars. I mean, and I'm not saying that lightly. I like most of what they've been doing. Right. I mean, the only, the only show that I didn't really get into, I mean, I watched it, but it was kind of a disappointment was book of Boba Fett. Book of Boba Fett was disappointing. But I think that's the problem I, I see in, in, in the internet at large is people kind of hone in on one thing and that sours their entire, the, the taste. They leave such a bad taste in their mouth they can't enjoy anything else. There, so I'll say there are parts of Disney getting Star Wars that's been a blessing and other parts of it that have fucking sucked, man. Um, I I really did not like the last trilogy. Like from from the first film and on the one thing that I will say about it. And the one thing that I found remotely redeeming in it was I got to see the single strongest force thing that I've ever seen in Canon happen. And it was fucking Luke Skywalker doing it. Sure. Uh, I thought that was incredible. So I'm going to, I, I'm going to say something that's probably going to make everyone in the comments angry. I liked the last trilogy. I thought it was fine. Okay. As a as a series of Star Wars stories, I thought it was fine, and I will tell you why. People lambasted the prequel trilogy. I mean, just destroyed it. Right. And look how fondly we look back on it now. I so, look at look at people like Hayden Christensen. Look at people like Ahmed Best. Look at how we celebrate I, them. I, now think, I think when we lambasted them. For I think so long. we I think we love them because they're a part of our thing, if you will. It's all a part of Star Wars. Though. Right. That's right. the thing, right? Star Wars isn't ours. It's Star Wars. Right. But when I say our thing, I mean the thing that we like. I understand the thing that we like, but we didn't like the prequel trilogy. No one did. I did. Well, how old were you in the prequel? Young. When, when, in 1999. How 1999, old you? I was about 10 years old. Yeah, see, I was a teenager in that right. era. Uh, I didn't like it. It was... A- appealed, I think, much more to a 10-year-old than it did sure. to a teenage man. But, right. yeah, it, it was not great. And we said as much. Uh, but now, looking back, and, and, and it's a rose-colored glasses thing, right? It's sure. hindsight is twenty twenty. But looking back, is it all as bad as we remember? No. Are there things about it that are bad? Sure. But there are things about the original trilogy that yeah. are bad. Yeah. I think the problem comes in when... We take something, a new trilogy of Star Wars. This is why people hated the prequel trilogy, and it's why people hate the sequel trilogy. Because we're always comparing the new thing to the last to the thing. thing that we fell in yeah. love with, which is the original trilogy. And it's never going to make you feel that same way again. It can't. Right. The idea of watching Star Wars for the first time is a feeling you're never going to recreate no matter how good any new Star Wars thing is. Right. You're never going to recreate that feeling of that world. So comparing what George Lucas did with the prequel trilogy, comparing what Disney did with the sequel trilogy to the original trilogy is not fair to those movies. I hear it's you. It's not fair. I hear you. I hear you. They should be judged on their own merits. Right, and the way that I look at these movies is it was a muddied mess 
from the get go. So the first, okay, the Force Awakens, the Force Awakens. We'll start there. I didn't need to watch A New Hope again, and that was my biggest complaint about it. That was my complaint. Uh, that was everybody's complaint. I did not need to see A New Hope again. I saw yeah. A New Hope, and A New Hope was better. Yeah. Um, they did a lot of like fun nostalgic shit that everybody got excited about. But guess what? We saw all of that when we got our first trailer. Sure. Uh, you know, Han Solo and Chewie and the Millennium Falcon. Actually, I think we watched that together at the shop. And Probably. I remember I remember getting goosebumps seeing that. I was like, was oh my trailer. God. Um, and then that that could have been that was the movie, basically. Like that was the whole film. And then the second movie, okay. It's great. It we we see it we see a little more happening. That's uh, another thing you're gonna you're gonna be angry about. Go ahead, be angry about it. The <laughs> second movie is great. There were there were parts of it, like you said, in old Star Wars that were just unnecessary. I think No, it's the best of the three. It is the best of the three. Really? You agree with that statement? Yeah. Because most people don't. I bet you guys don't gr- agree out there. No, the best of the new three. It's for sure the best of the new three. Well, I still we didn't. are of a kind. I, I still... We're in the minority, though. Yeah. Most people hate The Last Jedi. Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you not been on the internet any time in the past 10 years? I like, thought... <laughs> so, I thought everybody I was shitting old. on uh, Rise of uh Well, people Skywalker. shit on that one, too, yeah. but... Uh, of the three, the one that is the most universally panned and hated is The Last Jedi. Really? We had a whole episode where we talked about that. You don't remember that? No, I don't remember. We had a whole episode where we talked about why everyone's anger at The Last Jedi was totally misplaced and wrong. No, I remember talking about that. But we that, did a nerd rage episode. It was a nerd rage episode. I remember that. But <laughs> I, the thing, the thing about that, like, yes, that movie stood tallest out of the three for certain. It's great. Um, it's a fantastic film that acknowledges the history of Star Wars while moving forward with a story that's not the same. Sure, sure. And, and then J.J. Abrams just walked back all well, the changes that were made. That's that When I say it was all muddy, that's what I'm talking about. Well, they didn't go into it with a plan. That's the problem, right? Sure. You didn't, you didn't at least understand. You, before you, you, if you're making a trilogy of movies, which they knew they were going to do, right. there was no doubt they were going to make a trilogy. Even if the first two tanked, they were going to make a trilogy of movies. They were going to finish it, right? So if you know going in, this is going to be three films, don't you think you would sit down and at least make a treatment, not a script, but a treatment of what the story is in each part and how it works? The company that you're a part of has Marvel, which did it the best out of everybody. Yeah, but they had a plan. Right, that's what I'm saying. Don't you think you (laughs) You have to have a plan? Don't you think you would look at your friends at Marvel and say, hey, they had a blueprint, an overarching thing that they were going to do? Right. Maybe... Not right away. Maybe. But post Avengers, there was a plan. I mean, going up to Avengers, you could tell that we eh, They were kind of flying by the seat of their pants leading up to Avengers. Look, because there's a lot of we things. Had, if you go had, back and watch those original phase one movies, there's a lot of things that have just been dropped that it just got dropped entirely or don't matter sure. to the story at all. Uh, by Avengers, though, Avengers success made them go, okay, if we're going to continue doing this, what's the structure and how's it going to work? When we got those films, there was going to be an Avengers because I think it was at the end of Hulk. uh, Yeah, at the end of The Incredible Hulk, we have Ross talking to Stark. and Sure. uh, No, no, no. not uh, It was Ross talking to uh, Fury. No. Was it Fury or Stark? Kind of nerd are you. I, there's a there's a scene where one of these fuckers it was Ross talking to one or it was Fury Fury, Fury, Fury talking, talking to talking Stark to Stark yes. happens at the end of Iron Man Stark talking to Ross happens at the end of Incredible Hulk there we go okay. kind of nerd are you I'm 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 mixing it all together man I'm mixing it all this together. guy I know I <laughs> yeah I totally just muddied that I was like oh these are all yeah. so again they, they just didn't. We knew they didn't we were have a plan. It. The plan was to get the Avengers together. Right, but Star Wars didn't have a plan. Right. We were making each movie on our own. And when Ryan Johnson, he's talked about this, when he came on and said, well, what should I be worrying, worrying about? And what should I be building towards? They were just like, yeah, whatever. Uh-huh. Just do your movie. Well, that's okay. But if you know it's gonna, it's the middle movie of a trilogy, there should at least be a few checklist items. Hey, you got to make sure these things happen. So that when we get to this third movie, it all makes sense. Yeah, and you have to acknowledge that this had happened. Right. Yeah. Uh, it it was on. I really do think it was Ryan Johnson's intention that Ray was not special. Ray was not Palpatine's granddaughter. Yeah, that was so fucking that was stupid. stupid. Ray was important <laughs> because the Force needed balance. The dark side had grown too strong. The Force needed balance. So it reached out to someone who was sensitive to it. 
that could change the world, a chosen one, if you will. Because all of those people, any of you people out there that say Anakin Skywalker was the chosen one, you're wrong. He's not. Read some comic books. He's not the chosen one. The birth of Anakin Skywalker was not a miracle. It was not uh, some kind of, you know, uh, divine promise. It was Palpatine manipulating the midi-chlorians inside of Shmi Skywalker to create Anakin Skywalker because he knew in doing that, Palpatine and he would yeah. fool the Jedi into thinking the Chosen One had been born. It was Palpatine's play. Read some comic books. The comic books are canon now. Disney owns Marvel and Star Wars, which means Star Wars comic books are canonical <laughs> in the Star Wars universe. Well, we... Uh... The book isn't canon, but if you read the tale of Darth Plagueis or whatever. Sure. Plagueis. It's just called Plagueis. Plagueis, thank you. Yes. Yeah. They talk about it there. The whole thing. Sure. The whole thing's there. And they basically made all of that canon. Right. Well, they're, 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 they're bringing back the things that they like. So Anakin's not the chosen one. So you might say, well, then who's the chosen one? Is it Luke? Nah. Luke's not the chosen Whoever one. Ever is necessary to give him point in time. Right. The chosen one is not a single individual. The chosen one is an idea. The chosen one, and I think... Of all of the people that could be considered the chosen one, it's probably Ray. This is a person that we watch in the movie grapple with the idea that not only does she have the Force, not only is she a Jedi or trying to be a Jedi, but she's also kind of a Sith in some ways, right? She also does some stuff that's questionable right. when it comes to what a Jedi would do or could do. So... Balance in the Force is not Jedi or Sith. Balance in the Force is both. You cannot have light without darkness, and you cannot have darkness without light. Balance in the Force has been misinterpreted by both sides for years. It never should have been separate. It's one order, starting Force sound, users. starting to sound like Reven now. Well, that's... Revan is a good character insofar as... He represents a little bit of both, but he fell to the dark side, and we know that. And then right? he came back, and he kept aspects of it. Sure. Gray Jedi is what I'm talking about. Mm. There are gray Jedi. They do exist. The Guardians of the Wills were grays. I mean, hell, Donnie Yen's character in Rogue One was a Guardian of the Wills. Now, he might not have been Force-sensitive, but he believed, and it kept him safe, at least from his perspective. <laughs> maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But from his perspective, the Force was looking out for him. So I think there's, there's uh, you know, debate to be had about the Chosen One. I think we just need to probably leave that idea behind, though, right? I, one, I would argue that... Is it Ahsoka? The, I think the Chosen One changes from time to time. Because if I, if I had to pick somebody whom I thought it was, it'd be Luke Skywalker. It's not Luke. And he... He managed to get things to an okay place and fuck it up. Why is it Luke, though? Because he destroyed the Sith? No. No. <laughs> because, so... Because that's not bringing balance. No, no, no. So, <laughs> it's Papa Bear. It was, it was Papa Bear the whole time. So when, um, basically, when he brings Anakin back right there at the last couple moments of his life, I think that was his... That was his moment where he is bringing balance as much as as much right. as you can. The prophecy also <laughs> says the chosen one was conceived by the midichlorians. We know that Luke was not. No, nope, but Anakin he's, sure was. He's no he wasn't. It, he was okay. His midichlorians were, they were manipulated, manipulated by the yes, emperor. Yes, by by him and Plagueis, yes. Yeah. Cuz the emperor did not it, this is something that Plagueis had been doing for a very very long time before the Creating emperor life. ever came yeah. in. Creating life. Uh Years and years and years. Yeah. But it was unsuccess it was largely unsuccessful up until that point. He that needed Palpatine. He, he needed he, the power that Palpatine yes, had. Yes, he needed help. Yeah. And uh because he was very Plagueis was also very picky about who he took on as an apprentice. In a way, you could say Emperor Palpatine is, is Anakin's the chosen one? Is Anakin's father. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna say is the chosen one. I was like, maybe Because that was how they did it in the comics. Anakin's having this force vision. And the Emperor says, Anakin. I am your father, right? Because of course he does. But, so we're way off topic. We sure, started talking sure. about something very specific within yes. Star is, Wars. Is, is, there... is there too much Star Wars? Yes. Is the quality of that Star Wars lacking because there's too much? 
I think there's too much. I don't think we're we're able to appreciate I it. But I don't think we're lacking in quality. No, we're not. Obi Wan is Obi-Wan a fantastic show. Andor is some of the best Star Wars stuff I've ever seen, and it doesn't have any magic space wizards in it. And if Ahsoka is any indication, it's going to be a great show too. Right. But we're only four episodes into an eight episode eight episode series, and it's great, especially if you're a fan of Rebels. I mean, if you've watched all four seasons of Rebels and you have not watched Ahsoka. You're missing out. It's season five of Rebels. And it looks poised to reunite all of those people again. We already got a Zeb in season three of The Mandalorian. He, he meets with Carson and they're talking about uh, Navarro and all of that. <laughs> yeah, I... Zeb's the big giant Lysat no, alien I, guy with the goatee. I gotcha. I, I, think, <laughs> I, think we, I think we do have quality Star Wars coming out right now. Right, because I can understand if they were flooding the market with Star Wars and every other show was good. Right? We, then I think it would be a different conversation. Then the conversation would be, ah, there's just too much Star Wars. Because the quality is suffering as a result. But I don't think the quality has suffered. And see, and I think there's... I, the thing that makes me think there's too much is just that we constantly have it. There's nothing that makes it rare or valuable. <laughs> We constantly have it? Yes, it's always here. It's always here. There's always a new Star Wars series right there on the horizon or a new movie. Something along those lines. It's the same thing with So Marvel. you're telling me, though, everything they've been building with these shows through The Mandalorian, through Ahsoka, through Boba Fett, mm-hmm. all of this, Andor, all of this stuff that's going to eventually lead to a movie that Dave Filoni is going to write and direct doesn't have you excited? I'm, I'm ready for the movie. Grand Admiral Thrawn as the bad guy? Reuniting the empire again, I think it's all starting cool. a new war. It's all cool. It's all cool. He's building we have so much of it though. Dave Filoni again. He's trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together, right? So so that it works. The yeah. first order in episode seven, right? Everyone's where the hell did these guys come from? How did these guys gain so much power with uh, with the Imperials just destroyed, right? And and scattered. Well, how? Grand Admiral Thrawn. They're building, they're laying the groundwork for what will eventually become the First Order. They're showing us the New Republic and, and these former Imperials that have been you know, rehabilitated right, and are now working for the New Republic right. but still have loyalties to the Empire. Right, it's, there's I mean, that happens in the it. second episode yeah, of Ahsoka. It does. Long live the Empire! Mm-hmm. They're ready to die for the Empire working within the New Republic. Right. We saw it in Andor. We did see it in Andor. In the reclamation, when all of these people are kind of still loyal to the Empire. They're pretending to not be, but they definitely are. No, we've definitely, we've, they've shown a lot of the, of the, uh, I guess of the Empire loyalists. The First Order being grew just shady. within yeah. the New Republic. That is what I think is interesting, right? The First Order grew within the New Republic. It was you know, scientists and military people who, who put their intentions on hold for a little while to fool these people into thinking they were on their side. And then all of a sudden we have the First Order, which has to then give birth to a, a new rebellion, a resistance was what they called it, mm-hmm. right? So I think there's so much stuff. I agree with you. But... I don't think any of it has been bad, and I don't think any of it is unnecessary. Again, I did not say any of it was bad. Um, I do think it's I mean, Book good. of Boba Fett's not great. Book of Boba Fett actually was kind of crappy. Um, but when you not look, every episode, there were some episodes no, there, that I was there, just like, "Wow, that was amazing!" There were redeeming points there. Seeing Cad Bane come back that blew my <laughs> mind. But uh, one of the coolest bounty hunters in all of Star Wars. As, as far as like, yes, as a whole. All the all the new Star Wars stuff has been very good. Like every series, like minus Book of Boba Fett, has been. Well, and imagine, fantastic. just imagine this movie that we're building. Imagine the fight against Thrawn I think that, that includes the Mandalorians reunited under Bo Katan. I think they have to, but here here's the thing that we're going to run into with this. Much like we have with Marvel, is it going to get to a point to where I can't go just watch this movie? 
because I'm not up to date on all this other You're shit. You're not going to be able to watch this movie without watching these that's, television shows. That's what I'm saying. It's, the, the, but, but, but again, why would you not want to watch these television shows when the end result is going to be Thrawn and the Imperial Remnant reunited mm-hmm. versus the Mandalorians united under Bo-Katan? Uh, uh, Ahsoka Tano fighting alongside, I'm sorry, Luke Skywalker? In his prime, pre new Jedi Order, right? Come on, it's gonna be cool. There's yeah. no doubt about it. It's gonna be amazing. I want casuals to be able to like it too, though. I agree, but the 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 problem is inherent in anything. I mean, I'm a comic book fan. You're a comic book fan, right? The problem inherent in anything is eventually you're gonna get to a moment where you're gonna be confused unless you've been keeping up. One hundred percent. Right. You you I, I just put a post up about Superior Spider Man on FOC this week. You asked me to hold you one and I will. Yeah. But if you miss that one shot, you're, you're gonna, gonna go into behind. number one 100%. not going not knowing what the hell's going on. 100%. Or that's, how this all came about. That's why I said hold it for me. Exactly. So there's look, I understand the casual fan just wanting to go see a movie, but continuity continuity is inherently important will always build to a place where if you haven't watched or read, you're going to be confused. That's the thing that made Star Wars simpler a hundred years ago, though. No! We had, there were three films that people had to worry about, and that was it. I understand what you're saying, but when the prequel trilogy came out... Oh, there was so much shit out there. Expanded universe stuff infected that prequel trilogy. No doubt about it. Was it important to the plot? No, No, not really. But it was going to make the viewing experience bigger for the fan that had kept up. Of course. Do, do I think this movie won't be able to be watched just as a movie? No, absolutely. It will be able to be watched just as a movie. But all of a sudden, the Mandalorians reunited under a single flag coming into the battle? Yeah, that's going to be a big moment in the movie. And if you've kept up with how that has happened, it's, it will be a bigger moment. It, yes, it will be more exciting for the... the uh, adamant fan of course i don't think that we're ever i don't think that we're gonna not be able to watch this movie because we haven't watched x y and z tv show okay that's that was my concern because we do i don't i think dave filoni is enough of a good creator and writer that it will still be a movie it will still be a you know it'll have plot plot points structured movie that make it a movie but just like watching ahsoka if you had watched rebels I mean, the whole time watching that show, there are moments when I'm just like, oh, look, this is the thing. That's the vibe. This is the thing, right? Like, the, the fourth episode has a moment, and, and it won't make any sense to you, so it's not even really a spoiler, right? But the fourth season, or the fourth episode has a moment where she ends up in the world between worlds. And if you watch Star Wars Rebels, my immediate, when, when the camera started panning out and I realized what was going on, my immediate reaction was, how did she get here? You can't just get here. You have to have a portal. You can't just walk in. You can't just magic your way in. So that was my immediate reaction. And seeing what we saw at the end of that episode, I mean, I won't spoil that part because that's a big moment. But also I was like, well, how did that that happen? Right? Like, you can't, the world between worlds is broken. They're giving you a lot to chew on there. Yes. And uh, maybe, I, I hope, I hope, that it lends to uh, to a great a great Star Wars film, and it's something that everybody will like and appreciate. Look, I guess my question is: as you're watching the first couple episodes of Ahsoka, yeah, do you feel like you missed anything? No, exactly. No, and I think that's how the movie will feel. Good, you won't feel like you missed anything, but if you take the time, you're going to appreciate the Easter you're going to appreciate even more. these yeah. moments, these big moments, a little more. Sure. Will the movie be the first time you've seen Luke Skywalker back? Probably. But it shouldn't be because he's popped up two or three times at this right. point in these stories. And you should watch them because Luke Skywalker is great. He's cool. He's cool as shit. And they're getting much better at making it just look like Luke Skywalker. Right. The first time we saw it, it was like, eh, eh. And then a guy on the internet made it look better. And so Disney just hired that guy to make it look better. <laughs> I'm serious. That's how that story goes. You're pretty good at a this, A guy Dave. on YouTube Come on in. deep faked it to make it look better. Yeah. And Disney said, well, we need that guy. That guy, look how much better it looks. Get that guy. Call that guy. Get him to come work for us. Do you think they're still hemorrhaging money on these? No. 
No. Nah. I think they need they need the films to really well. The, kick the films ass are where they're going to make their money yes, for yes. sure. Because Disney Plus, I mean, it, it, do they pick up more subscribers with new things? I'm sure they do. Otherwise, why continue to make them? I wonder what viewership is on these shows. A viewership is pretty high for Ahsoka at the very least, but I think Ahsoka is an outlier. Ahsoka is a, a pop, been a popular fan favorite character a from her inception. very long time, yeah, from yes. the very get go. When the Mandalorian bl- broke the internet, yeah. Um, you have a fucking baby Yoda in it. It's, it's the cutest it's, thing in yeah, the world. It's Grogu. Yeah. That's Grogu is the one that made that show successful. He did. But I think, again, watching all of these things is going to help inform some of the bigger moments when we get to sure. a movie. And that's not the only movie we're talking about, right? They're, they're, they're talking about that as a movie to kind of be the, 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 the conclusion or at least the, the big moment of all of this. And then maybe we'll have some shows that go on after it. But they're also doing an Old Republic movie. And I'm a for the old Republic uh, X Wing um, Rogue Squadron type movie, which I'm, I'm also excited about that Patty Jenkins has been working on. Mm-hmm. So we got a few things to look forward to in movie form. And I mean, Rogue, the Rogue Squadron or the X Wing thing, whatever they end up doing, whether it's Rogue or Blue or Gold or whatever squadron they decide to tell us about, uh, that movie doesn't have any setup in any television show. Right. Right. So it could just be its own thing. Unless what they're saying is that Carson's Carson's X Wing contingent are the characters we're gonna follow. Because Wouldn't he was me. he was he's the Asian guy that you, yes. you keep seeing with the beard. <clears throat> he was supposed to have his own television show. Really? Rangers of the New Republic uh, was going to be his television show. Uh, yeah. Yep. Everybody forgets that. Yeah, that would have been fucking cool. Yeah. I wish we would have got four switches. Come on, man. We did. In Clone Wars and Rebels. Watch Clone Wars. Watch Rebels. I did see The Night Sisters are there. You you asked me, you were like, Did you watch Rebels? And I was like, No. And you're like, dude. Missed out. You missed out. The Night Sisters are there. Mm. And the Night Sisters are a great addition to Star Wars. Back in the old expanded universe, I think they were just called Force Witches. I think they were called Force Witches. Or back Night in the Witches day. Yeah. or something. It was Filoni who first called <laughs> them the Night Sisters. But They've infected almost every part of Star Wars. They were in the video games. They're in the video games now. They've infected pretty much every part of Star Wars. It's like a virus that just won't go away. I just love it, man. I love how they they reanimate the corpses of Dathmerian sons to to serve as knights and stuff. Like that's just so cool. The Dathmerian sons are the the Zabrax. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This is Darth uh, Maul's people. They're they're fucking scary, man. They're Those awesome. Force witches are scary. In Clone Wars. Uh, Savage Opress, Darth Maul's brother. He was reanimated and given more strength through Night Sister magic. When he died, because I don't know if he's actually dead, uh, but when he died, he had that green, oozy goo stuff leaking out of him, which was the Night Sister magic that had finally left him, right? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited. I like the Force Witches now. Oh, I love the Force Witches. The Force witches. Necromancers. Yeah. They're using magic, magic <laughs> with a K. Magic with a K. Magic with a K. Um, <laughs> so you don't think there's too much because there is. There's a lot. Clearly, you're liking it a lot. But I, but yeah, I think the difference is with you know Marvel, for instance. There's a lot of Marvel. Is it all great? Nah. Some of it's not great. Some of it could we could do without. We didn't sure. I didn't need you to tell me that story. That story wasn't great. Some of it's really good. But I think with Star Wars, they have proven that. Yes, there is a lot of quantity, but it's been mostly quality. It's been pretty high quality, yeah. yeah. That's fair. And I get I guess when you when you really look at it, I we've not gotten as much of that shit as we have Marvel shit. We had a moment there. We had a moment there where they were There's a lot of Star Wars. I mean, for sure. We've had lot. three seasons of Mandalorian. We had a book of Boba Fett. It's Ahsoka, mostly T V series. It's Obi-Wan. mostly T V series though. Yeah, they haven't done any more movies since right. Rise of Skywalker. Well, we had it we had a point in time there where they were doing like the solo movie and blah blah blah. There was so like so much shit coming out on top of the Disney Plus series that I think we were well, getting think, ready for. At I that think that's point what they realized, right? Yeah. Is is movies like <laughs> solo like rogue one probably would have just been better off as series probably right it's probably. why we went i think it's why we went the series road and we haven't made a new movie since then that makes sense because you didn't need to spend 500 million dollars to make this you could have spent 150 million and made a six episode television show and it would have been fine it wouldn't have been a great show like solo is an example probably wouldn't have been a great show regardless right but you didn't have to spend so much money you didn't have to piss off two great filmmakers in the process, Chris Lord and Phil Miller. 
And you want to say Chris Lord and Phil Miller uh, are not great filmmakers. I beseech you, go watch the Lego movie because you're wrong. They are great. <laughs> no, watch, the watch, watch Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, my God. And you'll, you tell me Phil Lord and Chris Miller are not great filmmakers. No, they're very good. And they were going to direct Solo. And then they wanted to take it in a direction that Disney didn't want. And they brought in Ron Howard. And he, Ron Howard, lit it all up. Turned it into a checklist of all the mystery of Han Solo. We just checked them all off as we went along. I mean, seriously, you could write down all the mystery of Han Solo. Everything, you, everything you ever questioned about who this character was or how he came to be, you could write it all down on a list and sit in the movie theater and just check everything off as you went. Oh, That's good. That's all it was. Does he shoot first? Yeah. Kessel run? All right. Uh, gun? Yep, there it is. Attitude? Up <laughs> oh, comes from Woody Harrelson. Yep, there it is. I mean, you could literally just check it all off. It's not yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was not great. Probably would have been a better TV show. Or would have been a shitty TV show. I don't know. I think it would have been a shitty Rogue TV One, show. Rogue One, though, I think is, is a perfect example of another one that probably should have just been a TV show. Because Andor has proven... That story, that timeline, those characters in a long form television show, because Andor was the longest one they've done so far, mm -hmm. the longest television show. And every episode was solid. I don't think we needed every it. Every episode was fantastic. With, with Rogue One, though, I don't think, I think if we would have done eight hours of fucking. Nah, that would have been a six one. That would have been a six one. Okay, six is too much. It wouldn't have been six hours either. I mean, shit. Let's be honest. Most of these shows aren't having. Yeah, hour, they're probably thirty-minute shows, hour-long episodes, right? Right. Right. I guess it's that's not fair. Game of Thrones up in here, <laughs> right? I, I guess that's what I'm. I'm like, I've got in my head because I'm like, yeah, a, a hour and a half, two-hour movie, totally acceptable. Yeah. I think that's plenty of time for that story, sure. and it was good. That, like I said, that's my favorite Star Wars movie that's come out in the last, you know, twenty years. Yeah, I mean, it's a good movie. So, not my favorite Star Wars movie. It's a good movie. Not though. my favorite, but in the last twenty years. Because, uh, what? hold on. No, episode episode three is say, technically... Is Revenge technically, of the Sith is a pretty okay no, that, that, movie. That that one's actually... That's a good... It's pretty okay. That's a good flick. He had a lot of loose ends that he was tying up there. Old yeah, it Lucas. seemed like he rushed uh, the conclusion when he could have just used the three movies he was making to tell that story a little more succinctly. Oh, 100%. The fact that we started with Anakin Skywalker as a child was something we just didn't have to do. We didn't have to do that. No. It was we, we could have we, we could have began. You know what? We could have in Jedi training. We we could have picked him up as a kid, and it could have taken seven minutes. Seven minutes of the well, film. Yeah, we spent the whole movie with him as a kid. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, if it would have yeah. taken seven minutes, we could have done this like fast track. You see him growing up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. A little uh, montage. Yes. Exactly. Of his training. training montage. Exactly. Yeah. I am uh, excited though that Hayden Christensen is having a moment again. He I is. Am, I am. He got uh, shit on so much, and I don't think did. it was deservedly so. No, he's a good actor. Um, he's been great in several films since yeah, Star he's Wars. He's a good actor. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with him as an actor. I think he just had a shit director. Yeah. George Lucas is not a good director. No. He'll tell you that. <laughs> That's not me shitting on George Lucas. He said, and I quote, "I'm not a good director." At least he gets it. It's why he brought in guys like Steven Spielberg and right. Francis Ford Coppola to help him direct because he doesn't know how to do it. Yeah, he's a good creative mind. Yeah, he's, and, good, he's a big big picture guy. Yeah, big picture guy. Yeah. George R. Binks. Um, <laughs> Look, Ahmed Best is having a moment too. He, Oh, my God. Did he ever? Did he ever? Well, I'm just saying there's there's not only not only that, right, having him be the Jedi – that saved Grogu, yep. right? Makes Ahmed Best as an actor a much more like likable character. But even as Jar Jar Binks, again, we're not looking back on that with as much anger as we had when it initially came out. No. When here, I thought the character... Like, Ahmed when, Best got so much hate. I mean, he, he went to a very low, dark place. Right. We're lucky that man is still alive. Right. Based on how, how much hate he got. I remember being a kid and watching that. Well, if you're a child, Jar Jar Binks is hilarious. My wife said that. Right. I, I was like. If I, I was nine years old, I'd be laughing my ass like this goofy guy. He's great. I thought he was funny. I didn't think he was necessary, but he sure. was funny. Sure. And, uh, but he was necessary. Like, to the story on Naboo, he had a pivotal, this whole thing. No. He acted as a, a liaison between the Jedi and his people. You think that Qui Gon and Obi Wan couldn't no, have, they, couldn't they, have made that Force deal with no, they, without Jar Jar Binks because they, totally they absolutely could have. They totally could have, but Jar Jar Binks <laughs> led him to their uh, to his people. Well, yeah. So he had a thing that he had to do there. Well, well, let's 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 rewind for a sec, right? Because is Jar Jar Binks leading them to 
uh, his people necessary droids that Obi-Wan and Anakin came down to the planet with are going to the capital. Well, we just tag along. That's how we got down here in the first place. That's fair. That's when fair. you're inside the droid transport, the droids aren't active. No one's looking at you. Right. You could just chill. That's fair. <laughs> they, they don't activate them until they shove them out. They could have hitched a ride. Right, exactly. Yeah. So is he necessary? No, not at all. He's not necessary to the story. The story could have gone on without they, Jar Jar Binks. They had a whole battle and slowed droids down, though. Uh, they, that okay. battle was also unnecessary. Being as, how, being as how the space battle was being done to shut down all the droids planet side. So that battle was unnecessary too. I think it was tying up more droids planet side though so that they could do more in the city and stuff like that. I think I, they were creating multiple fronts upon which this battle could be George fought. Lucas even said when he, when he realized how many battles he was going to have at the end of Phantom Menace, he looked right at the camera during a, a behind the scenes thing and said, I might have gone too far. Because even George Lucas was, was going, this might be too many battles. Too, too many battles, battles, guys. Oh, well, I thought it was cool. <laughs> I thought it was cool. And I thought for that, I was happy with the character. Um, it, it, that being said, like looking back at the film, I'm like, uh, a little weird, but okay. My sure. wife, however, loves Jar Jar Binks. She's like, oh, stop. <laughs> uh, she's like, I think he's so funny. So anytime we talk about it, she's like, yeah, I liked Jar Jar Binks a lot. That was the only reason I liked Star Wars is what she said. Well, but that's the thing, right? Like she was young right. then seeing the movie. It's what R2-D2 and C-3PO were years ago. Yeah. yeah. They were these stupid comic relief things. And beep, beep, boop, boop. Beep, yeah, beep. but their comic relief was more subtle. Jar Jar Binks comic relief was a little ridiculous. It was in your face. It was in your face. No doubt about it. He, yeah, was, yeah. A, he was a cartoon character in a movie. Yes, uh, absolutely. So they... They did their whole thing there, but no, I, I, I feel bad for Ahmed Best for the bullshit that he went too. through for it. I feel uh, bad for a lot of those people. I'm glad he got his moment in the sun, though. Yeah. and He's the one who saved Grogu. No one can ever take that away from him. No, he's the best fucking <laughs> he's Jedi. He's the Jedi who saved Grogu. <laughs> and everybody loves Grogu. Best way to make yourself likable again is put yourself next to Grogu. Yeah, be the guy and everyone that will saved love you. him. Everyone will love you forever. Pedro Pascal? They Everyone love will love him forever because yep. he defends that little tiny cute thing that we all love. <laughs> oh, fucking nerds. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with Star Wars as it is. I think uh, there so, is a lot of quantity, but it's been pretty quality the whole time. Fair enough. Fair enough. What do you guys think? Is there too much? Are we wrong? Is, is there too little? Because we could be wrong. We could be. These, we're they, wrong a lot. They could be shit shows. It could be really bad. <laughs> we, we're just like, and oh, we're just so into Star Wars that it doesn't anytime matter. Anytime there's a, a Star Wars badge on it, we're like, no, that's really fucking it's great. good. It's great. It's so good. It's really good. You see that guy's armor? He's a Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually funny. Uh, the two, just before we go, the two bad guys, quote unquote, in Ahsoka, the, the Force users, yeah. when he takes his cloak off in the most recent episode, He's wearing what looks like the old clone armor that the Jedi oh. in the fought. Like when Obi Wan fought in the Clone Wars, he wore like a clone yes, trooper yes, armor he did. mixed with his Jedi robes. Kind of looks like that. When he takes his robe off, I was like, he looks like he just took that armor and painted it black. Like it looks very similar with the pauldrons and the, the, the different parts oh, here. Oh man, like it's just cool looking, right? Yeah, it makes him seem like he was a general that was fighting in the Clone Wars, and that's what made him go, "What are we doing?" Right? Jedi are Ooh. peacekeepers. We're not soldiers, and that's why he walked away. That's not to go join the dark side, just to be like, "You guys suck now." Yeah, and I'm not doing this anymore. We don't need to be involved. This in isn't what I signed up for. Global politics, exactly. Or, uh, galactic politics. Yeah, I'm this sorry. isn't what I signed up for. Right, right. This is not what the Jedi Order stands for, and Qui Gon saw that too. Well, no, there was a there was a vast overstepping of what the Jedi should have been doing. When Count Dooku in All Episode Two said to Obi Wan, "If Qui Gon were still alive, he'd be on my side." He was right. Qui Gon would definitely be on Count Dooku's side. They, they told that story in comics, and that's the only reason I know. It's not it's not some weird insight that I have. It's a comic book. It's not some weird. In- <laughs> Look, I am one with the Force, so I know these things. <laughs> I was talking to his Force ghost just the yeah, other day. Yeah, his Force ghost. They appear to me all the time. You didn't know that? You can't Liam, see him? He's right here. Liam Nielsen shows up to your- Neeson. Neeson, I'm sorry. Liam Neeson shows up to your house and is like, hey, um, I just wanted you to know Dooku was right. I would be on Count Dooku's side. Yeah. <laughs> he was right. Uh, so yeah, let, it, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, you can- 
write us some nice hate mail. Send that to entertainthegeeky at gmail.com. I'll take the time to read it on air. It's a fun thing that we can do. Yeah, uh, yeah. No press is bad press. Right? No, not at all. Even hatred is press. <laughs> <laughs> we get presidents that way now. <laughs> um, so yeah, go to entertainthegeeky.com. You can follow us on all of our social media there. If you have not already, subscribe wherever you get your podcast. You can uh, subscribe to our little thing that we do here, or you can stay here on YouTube. If you're listening to this not on YouTube, I feel bad for saying that, but uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It yes. works. It helps us. We love you. Give us a like or a dislike, either way. I mean, no, no, we want these. Eh, we want these. No press is bad press. It is, man. If we get too many dislikes, we won't show up in the algorithm, and the algorithm <laughs> already <laughs> does not like us. The algorithm's um, never gonna like us. It, dude. There was a period in time where I was like, "Oh, this thing fucking loves us," yeah. and then the last two shorts and two videos that I've posted, I'm like, "What did I do to you, YouTube?" It just doesn't like us. Yeah, no, not right now. It'll get over it. I think we'll <laughs> we'll mend our fence. We'll mend the fence there. We'll we'll fix our relationship with the YouTubes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But yeah, thank you for hanging out. As always, stay geeky. <laughs>